Hi Springdale family. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Ashley Lane and I'm a teacher here in the Springdale District. And today my goal is to help you get a little bit more organized with your intervention time, specifically when you're implementing Lexia in your instruction. But before we get started, I want to take a minute to introduce myself. So this is my second year teaching at George Elementary and I am currently a second grade teacher. This is also my sixth year coaching club volleyball for Ozark Juniors, so some of you might have some girls in your classrooms that are actually a part of that program. Um, I graduated from the MAT program in 2019. I went to school in Salem Springs, Arkansas, and I've been married for almost four years. And my passion as an educator is ultimately to empower and equip students for their future so that they can ultimately be the best that they can be. So as we get started, I want to ponder a couple initial questions that I had when I began implementing Lexia in my classroom. So we had a lot of professional development, we had the opportunity to do a lot of training on the program, but I still had several questions, specifically when I was implementing this program in my classroom and also when I was finding a system to better keep track of my students' data. So here are some questions that came to my mind and we'll discuss these throughout the presentation. So first of all, I wanted to know, how could I keep track of how many intervention lessons have been delivered per student, both electronically and on paper? I also wanted to know, how can I always have the tools and resources I need on hand when a student flags is struggling? And then how can I help my IAs and my interventionists be successful in implementing this intervention while also keeping communication tight between myself and those helping my students? And if I don't have an intervention that particular day, what can I do to best support my kids and to provide interventions to the best of my ability in my classroom? And lastly, how can I make my data concise to more effectively communicate student progress with my students, with my colleagues, and also with their parents? To start off, I want to take a minute to show you all how you can track the interventions per student electronically. So I actually created a document for you all that shows step-by-step -step instructions for tracking a student's um, struggling lesson delivered online. So if you go to your home page on Lexia, you would click on struggling students. Then you have your list here and on the right hand top corner, it will say all delivered lessons. And when you click on that button, it will show every single lesson that you marked as delivered throughout the entire school year. Now this is really great data. However, I'm not super on top of marking every lesson that I deliver electronically. And there are several lessons that I actually had the opportunity to, to deliver in my classroom that were undocumented electronically. So I decided to come up with my own system to track this so that I could also leave comments and mark if a lesson was delivered multiple times to a student. So for example, if a student was struggling on level six, specifically with categorizing CBC words, if they stay struggling on that lesson on that same level, it will only mark that lesson as delivered one time. But if I use this document here, I can document every single time that this lesson was delivered for my student. So let me give you an example of what this looks like with actual student data. So here is one of my logs that I keep for one of my students and it has every single struggling lesson that has been delivered this year. And as you can see in this illustration, CVC word category and um, this CVC word category struggling lesson was delivered multiple times, five times to be exact, um, up to this date. However, it's only marked once on Lexia. So this provides me with a little bit more concrete data and gives me additional data if I decide I needed to push this kid into RTI or if I wanted to get this child sped tested. This gives me a little bit of additional documentation with the Lexia intervention that we are implementing in our classroom. And the one area that I feel like I struggled with the most initially was figuring out a method to organize my materials anytime I needed to deliver a lesson. So one problem that I had initially was that I would print a lesson, I would have to cut out all these materials because in second grade you have a lot of cut and paste or maybe you have a lot of word sorts. And after that lesson was delivered, I wouldn't have a system to keep up with that lesson so I would throw it away and then a couple days later, maybe a couple weeks later, that same lesson would pop up for a different student who happened to be struggling in that same area. So what I have done is I've created my own filing system to help me keep these lessons on hand. But before I show you that, I want to take a minute to show you how you can actually find these lessons if they don't pop up on Lexia. So if you are on your Lexia page and you go click on the resources tab, 
you will see under the core five category, there is a link for Lexia lessons, Lexia skill builders, and Lexia connections, which are other online resources to support your kids with their Lexia intervention. So if you click on the Lexia lessons, it shows every single struggling lesson that could potentially be delivered from level one all the way up to level 21. So in my classroom, I had kids as low as level one starting out at the beginning of the year and some kids that were even past second grade in levels 13 and 14. So I decided that I needed a system where I could have all these lessons on hand so all my materials were ready to go. And in addition, if you decide you want to print skill builders, you can print those here as well. So here are some things that I look at whenever I'm referencing a struggling lesson to pull for one of my students. First off, I want to know what is the name of the lesson? What is the specific focus for that child in that lesson. Then I want to know the level that lesson is associated with and then I also want to know the content area strand and here in a second I'm going to show you a video to show you exactly how this is organized. So this is a brief picture of my actual system that I have in my classroom. As you can see, I have levels one through 12 in these two tubs, and I also have some intervention folders for some of my IAs and my interventionists that come into my classroom every day. And I've created a brief video that I actually created for my staff that I'm gonna share with you all as well, showing you how I utilize the system in my classroom. Hello, George family. I just wanted to take a minute to hop on and show you guys how I keep my Lexia intervention information organized. So as you can see, I've created two tubs that are full of nothing but the struggling lessons and the skill builders for levels one through 12 on Lexia. So I started with level one because at the beginning of the year, I had students that were struggling on level one, even though we are in second grade. And so I needed to go ahead and print those materials and have them ready. But by the end of second grade, we hope that students complete level 12. So I have materials through level 12 as well. However, I do have a couple students that are currently on level 13 and 14. So I still need to build the actual folders for the struggling lessons for those two levels, but I do have their skill builders printed and prepped. And I keep all my skill builders for each level directly behind the level folder tab. So as you can see, level eight, their skill builders are directly behind. I have the list and the skill builders are organized based on content area strand. So some of the content area strands are um, phonics. We also have vocabulary comprehension and each level contains different content area strands that the kids are expected to focus on. As you can see, this particular level has a ton of lessons within phonics and so does level nine. But if you go back to level one, there's only one lesson in phonics, but there's still that content area strand. Now, I wanna show you what this looks like if I'm looking to pull a lesson for a student. So for example, there's a student in my class right now that's stuck on level six and he is specifically struggling with vocabulary and categorizing CBC words. So if I see that struggling lesson up, I know to go to level six, I can go to vocabulary, and then I have that CBC word category lesson that I can pull. Now, each lesson has its own folder, and in that folder, you will have the scripted lesson that is provided in a PDF form on Lexia. And if you look at that PDF form, here are some things that you can look at to categorize your lessons. So vocabulary is my content area strand. CVC word categories is the name of the actual lesson. That's what I use for the tab. And then if you look in the bottom left hand corner, you will see the levels. So some lessons actually have more than one level associated with them. I like to keep them in the lowest level on the list, just so that I'm saving a little bit of paper because some lessons do duplicate and it just helps me stay a little bit more organized and save space within my tubs. On top of that, you will also see that each lesson requires preparation materials, but sometimes I don't necessarily have the time to cut out things that the kids need to do word sorts or to do whatever they're expected to do. So what I have done is I have included a folder in every single um, file that needs one and I have cut up any materials that the students might use and I've also laminated them so that it is easier to reuse them so that I'm not constantly reprinting the lesson just so that I have the materials the kids need. That way, anytime a student flags, all I have to do is walk to this folder. I pull it out. When I'm done, I put it right back. Oops, there we go. And we are ready to go. This is also really helpful for my interventionists that come into my room 
Um, anytime they have a student that they're working with that is on a struggling lesson, all they have to do is go to the level, go to the content area strand, pull the lesson that that kid needs to work on, and they have all of their materials there. So one way that I communicate with my interventionists is I keep a folder for each of them. So I have two interventionists that work with my kids during our Alexia time. And each day I provide them with a daily intervention objective. And any struggling lessons that the kids are on, I go ahead and write those here so that my interventionist knows exactly where to pull from. And then I also leave a space for comments. So if she's able to work with these kids, she's able to tell me how they did with that lesson. And then she also records it on this page as well. So this is how I keep my running record of number of interventions that students have received um, through Lexia and also comments about the interventions that they received. So as you can see, this particular student was provided with the CBC word category lesson multiple times. But if you look at my Lexia on my delivered lessons, it only shows that this student received this lesson once because that's the only time it actually assigned it because all these occurred within the same level. So this just gives me a little bit of more information to provide with parents, or if I decided I wanted to push this kid into RTI, this would give me a little bit of data to support that decision. I also have extra copies of their um, intervention agenda in each folder as well. However, I also have Maria who comes into my room every day and the students that she is assigned to work with don't always need um, struggling lessons to be delivered. So in that case, I also provide her with a weekly lesson plan. So if she has time to work with kids a little bit longer or if they don't have any struggling lessons to complete, these are some areas that I see deficits with these particular students with phonemic awareness, um, phonics, and also just some decoding and encoding skills that they can practice. If I have specific skills for specific students that I want them to practice, I can also list them here. And I give her a space to leave me comments just again to open that line of communication between myself and my interventionists so that I know what my kids are working on even if I'm not working with them specifically. And the last thing I wanna talk about is my kids' skill builders that they work on. So every single morning when my kids walk into the classroom, they come to this tub and they grab their skill builder folder and they grab their handwriting notebook. So when they reach into their folder, this is some of the things that they see. So they will see their skill builders here on the right and they will go to the next open page and they are expected to complete one page of skill builders per session of morning work. And then after they complete their skill builder, they are expected to come to this side of the page and they are to reflect on the skill builder they completed. As you can see, this student felt pretty good about the skill builder they completed. Here they said it was easy. Second day it said it was, it was the same as last time. So it still felt pretty good, still felt pretty easy for this particular student. So that is how I organize my Lexia Core 5 time with my students. That's how I incorporate skill builders in my daily instruction, and that is also how I utilize my struggling lessons. Now, I know this is a huge thing to kind of chew on, um, and I will tell you this did not um, take me just a single afternoon to complete. This took me multiple weekends sitting for multiple hours at a time to actually organize everything. So I know this looks super overwhelming at a glance, if you are interested in building this, I would suggest starting with one level at a time. That's how I did it, did it in small chunks, and eventually I was able to build up to having a class set of levels that my kids were all working on and needing support with. Um, if that's even too much, I would even start with struggling lessons that you're already delivering, and instead of throwing them away when you finish, I would go ahead and build a file for that lesson so that you have it on hand when you are able to get a little bit more organized. Um, if you have any additional questions or if you want to come see my system or if you would like any of the resources that you saw in this particular video, I will have a resources link um, at the end of this slide for you all to use and make copies of different documents that I've created. And I would love to visit with you one-on-one -on -one if you are interested to talk about how you can get organized with your struggling lessons. But that is all I have and I'm going to go ahead and hop back into the presentation. Now I wanna take a minute to pause and kind of let all the information that I just shared with you marinate 
because I do realize this is a ton of information. And I also want to let you guys know that just because this system works for me does not necessarily mean that it's a system that's going to work well for you. My hope out of providing you with this information and sharing these resources that I have created and that I have um, is that you'll find one item that can make your time utilizing Lexi in your classroom a little bit easier, a little bit more um, effective in just managing your time, and also save you a little bit of time once you start actually implementing these and create your own routine using these tools. I also want to let you know that any template that I've used and shown you all in this slide, I've linked at the very end of this slide, which your principals will have access to. So you guys have access to any of these templates that I've shared with you all, and hopefully at least one of them will be beneficial. And when it comes to building your own kit, I really want to emphasize, even though I said this in the video, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of patience. So I would recommend getting together with your grade level team and maybe building one kit for your grade level with all the levels that your kids need. And I would specifically start with the levels that your kids are currently working through or the levels that your kids are showing as struggling in their Lexia accounts. Just because if you start with one level, it makes it a little bit easier to expand. And after you build level by level, you will eventually have a classroom set. That's how I did it, so I highly suggest that if you decide to build it, that you use that strategy. I also wanted to figure out how I could best support my IAs and my interventionists during my Lexia time. Um, at George, I'm lucky enough to have two interventionists that actually assist me while my kids are working on Lexia. But one question I had is, one, how can I best utilize my IAs so that they're supporting my students to the best of their ability? And how can I also equip them so that they're prepared every single day to deliver struggling lessons or provide my students with their own personalized instruction based on what they need? So I want to show you really quickly the intervention um, template that I have that I provide my interventionists every single day. And this is a template that you guys will have the opportunity to use as well if you're interested. So they have a space to provide student name. Here is where I provide their tier two and three instruction, which is their struggling lesson that is being delivered. Or if they don't have a struggling lesson, you could always assign them a skill builder and have those printed for your IA or for your interventionist so that those are ready to go. And then I give them a space to leave comments. This is how I keep communication tight between myself and my teachers that are coming in to help support my kids during this time. And it's been a really effective way for me to open that line of communication while also not taking away from my instructional time in my classroom. Now, some of you might be watching this video and saying, Ashley, I don't have interventionists that come in my room, and I completely understand. Every school has different resources, and even different grade levels have access to different resources and different people. So what I would suggest is making a copy of this document and maybe having a rotating schedule where you have an opportunity to either meet with kids one-on-one -on -one every week to talk about where they're at in Lexia, or maybe to have an opportunity to provide those struggling lessons if your kids are struggling, or maybe even assign them skill builders so that they can reinforce those skills that they're passing as they're going through Lexia as well. And I also have an example of a completed agenda with some additional comments. So here, this interventionist had four students that she had the capability of working with. Three students needed a struggling lesson delivered, and one student was assigned a skill builder, or they were given the choice to work on Core 5 with the assistance of the interventionist. Um, and here they made some comments. This one says he was very distracted. So maybe if they didn't get very far in Core 5 that particular day, this gives me a little bit of information to explain why. And then at the top, there is another note based on how they did on the CBC word category struggling lesson that was delivered. And lastly, I really wanted to find a way to make my data concise, just because when I initially received professional development on navigating student data on Lexia, I was very overwhelmed by the amount of data they provided. And I wanted to kind of simplify my data in such a way that it was meaningful in communicating student progress with parents, and also meaningful when trying to provide my students with additional resources that they might not have the capability of getting in my classroom. And one way that I'm doing that, that I actually started this semester is I've created a skill builder data tracking system. So this is the one area specifically that you cannot track data on on Lexia just because skill builders are something that you print. Um, one teacher at my school actually created seesaw lessons for skill builders in levels that my kids are currently on, which is a really great resource. But I also wanted to have the capability to keep track of that in one space. So I know how did my kids do on it? When did they complete it? Do they need 
me to continue reinforcing those skills or are they ready to move on to something different? So this is another document that I created just to track my students' skill builders. In my classroom, I initially had this created from level one to level 15, just because there were, those were the levels my kids were currently working on with their skill builders. However, after listening to teachers' comments and suggestions for making these documents better, I went ahead and added all skill builders levels one through levels 21. So if you decide to use this document to keep track of student progress on their skill builders in your classroom, you can make a copy of this document and delete any levels that your kids aren't necessarily needing. So that is another really great resource that you all have access to as well. And another thing that I'm implementing in my classroom just to not only communicate data with my parents, with my colleagues, but also with my students is I'm requiring students to reflect every single day on the skill builders that they complete in their morning work. So here's an example of a completed self-assessment by one of my students in my classroom. This student is pretty strong linguistically, so they are asked to give themselves a rating in the center with the picture. They convert that rating and implement it into the sentence frame, and then they also expand and justify why they gave themselves this rating. Now, in the folder that I've created for you all, I have this exact skill builder reflection, but I also have a modified skill builder reflection for some of my students that aren't quite ready to justify their thinking or justify their rating on their own. So in that case, that skill builder requires them to rate themselves and transfer the language they used here into the sentence frame provided and the because and the extra lines is just deleted so the kids do not have to worry about that. So that's another great option that you guys have as well. And that is all I have for you guys today. I just wanted to take a minute to thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Um, I hope that at least one item in this presentation is something that you can take and use in your classroom to better maximize your time during Lexia and to also provide the best intervention you can for your students. Um, in these slides, I've also included my contact information. So if you have additional questions or if you would like to reach out and kind of see what the system looks like in person, I would love to set up meetings or I could even maybe hop on a Zoom with your faculty during a faculty meeting um, just to show you what my organization actually looks like just because sometimes it's a little bit hard to communicate um, technologically. But I also want to show you the folder that contains all of the resources that you guys have access to right here. So it is titled Lexia Intervention Organization and every single document that I have listed is in this folder for you. So you will have access to viewing it. All you have to do is make a copy for yourself. You can keep track of the data digitally or you are more than welcome to print it and use it however you see fit in your classroom. Thank you guys once again for sharing your time with me. I hope that at least one item that I shared with you in this presentation is helpful. Again, if you have any questions or if you would like to talk more about how I organize my intervention. I would love to hear from you all, and I hope you have a wonderful day.